first sight, honestly. The second we walked up to it, up the front stairs with the really great tall glass and the neat staircase, and we walked out into the space that was here, and, and the, the chandeliers and the, the daylighting, and just the cool mid-century feel, we were sold the second we walked in the door. We were looking for a building that would accommodate our growth, um, but also accommodate a seismic upgrade. We wanted to make sure that when the earthquake comes, because we're certain that it will come, that our building would be able to withstand um, the seismic motions and let us come back to work the next day. The mechanical systems were completely shot. The electrical systems were completely shot. There was a lot more work that we needed to do once we started uncovering. But we decided we're going to go with our electrical systems or their mechanical systems. We're just going to do it right. We weren't going to cut corners. We wanted to, this to be our building, our home for, for forever, essentially. So there was no reason at all for us to not go and do everything right. Mid-century modern is kind of a catch-all term for the post-war architecture that started happening when materials were being mass-produced and there's kind of this huge building boom in America after the war. So really started as most American architectural movements do on the coasts and in Chicago and then it proliferated, just kind of made its way um, through the country to places like Salt Lake City. Mid-century modern architecture really focuses on those materials, the mass-produced materials, whether it's concrete or steel, and new technology really just allowed the use of natural light and clean aesthetic lines. The Steiner American Building's cool as a mid-century modern building because it's, it's really unique. It's hard to characterize as one of the kind of sub styles of modernist architecture it's it's really its own its own building on the exterior you see those really heavy concrete lines um, of the structure that are infilled with brick but it reads as a really really horizontal building so it's punctured by this kind of um, vertical element of the stair tower that we see here. The brick is run in a vertical bond pattern that you wouldn't have seen previously. And then on the interior, it brings in natural light, especially through this central clear story window. So one of the big issues with the construction of this building was it was the site of the Weir Cosgrove Mansion, which itself was a beautiful um, Victorian mansion that was by the mid-60s in a state of pretty bad disrepair. The head of Steiner American Corporation, Dick Steiner, was trying to rehab the old mansion and it just didn't work. They ended up demolishing the mansion, um, but coming back with this design that feels actually pretty contextual to the neighborhood of the South Temple Historic District, which is home to all these you know, stately mansions and um, large apartment buildings. It, kind of achieves an appropriate scale and context by um, really just feeling shorter than it is through some of those horizontal moves. Um, they hid the parking garage beneath the building so you can't even see it from South Temple. The building in general just doesn't really call attention to itself very much at all. The original architect of the Steiner American building was William Browning, Bill Browning. He was part of this first generation of Utah modernists, and um, this was one of his first buildings he designed as a professional when he became a part of Scott Louis Browning. It's always difficult trying to fit a modern, thriving office into a building that wasn't built for that real context. I mean, when this was built, it was for a pool of secretaries in the, sitting in the middle with typewriters and executives kind of ringing the, the exterior of that office space. And that's really not what Colvin was looking for in a modern office. We clearly needed to maintain the, the daylighting uh, out in our central core. That was absolutely key to everything. But we also needed to remove um, the mid-century tiny little paneled offices and tiny little private uh, executive restrooms, which aren't really a part of how people work anymore. Um, and so we needed to remove that while maintaining still the, the overall feel of the building. We ended up doing quite a big seismic uh, upgrade. We put in shear walls and um, a adapting those shear walls to the existing building and, and while hiding it. Right? We didn't want those to be a, a feature in any way. 
So we work carefully with our structural engineer to pick the best place for shear walls and minimize how much of a foundation that we had to dig. Um, so there's a lot of uh, tweaking and back and forth to make the, the, um, the shear walls accommodate. So this is one of the five concrete shear walls that we installed on this lower level parking deck. Um, basically what it does is transfer some of the shear load down through the parking deck all the way down to the foundation and it also ties into these existing um, columns by using reinforced concrete. So looking at the shear walls from the exterior side, this is from the South Temple side. Um, you can see how we finished it out to kind of match some of the surrounding finishes by stuccoing over it and painting it to match. Um, you can also see from here how it's kind of recessed behind this lower brick wall and also how that finish kind of plays with the, the cocoa colored brick and the other exterior finishes. It's personally satisfying to work on mid-century modern in part because it's, it's emerging technology right now within the historic preservation field. Um, the 70s this year are starting to turn 50. You come into a building like the Steiner American Building, which did serve as the headquarters for Steiner um, for its entire existence, and it's kind of like a time warp, it feels like you're you're in the 60s because they just, they haven't altered the building very much. Now that it's finally being considered historic, it's fun to just be the first person to do a real um, kind of rehabilitation on the building and, and bring it back to its, its former glory. I'm very proud of the fact that the original architect came to our open house and he came in and said, you've done a spectacular job maintaining my original vision while bringing it into the 21st century. I was really proud to hear that because uh, that was our goal. That's what we wanted to do. We wanted to totally respect the history and the, the, the architecture of the building while making it something that's going to work for the next 50 years. And, and when he said that, um, that kind of made all that hassle worthwhile.